an, it's an amazing march for, for the development of atomic clocks. Um, from the very first time that Harold Lyons actually throw, not, was able to lock on to the, to the um, ammonia atom back in the 19, late 1940s, there's been this procession, a continuous march of improving the atomic clocks. And some of the great steps that were taken was, for instance, what uh, uh, H.I. Robbie, I.I. Robbie was able to accomplish with, and then uh, Norman Ramsey with the split microwave cavity, right up to, instead of using magnets as the, as the state selection devices for atomic clocks, they started using lasers. So maybe one of the most amazing thing was the fact that they could use lasers to cool atomic atoms, to cool atoms. Instead of having the atom all at a, at a, at a thermal temperature, 200 degrees Celsius, they could actually use lasers to, to sympathetically cool these atoms and cool them down to near absolute zero, 0 0.004 degrees Kelvin, holding these atoms in a, in a, in a, in a, in a state of non-kinetic energy in essence. And that led to atomic clocks that we now have that you toss the atoms up through the microwave region and they fall back down. They're so cold they act like a small little plasma ball. Amazing technology, amazing step forward in, in, in atomic clock. So a very simple explanation of how an atomic clock works would be the idea that all things all things, all atoms, all elements, absorb and emit at very, very distinct frequencies. Their, their outer shell electron allows them to absorb energy and emit energy in a very distinct, very, very distinct location, very distinct frequency. And so we use that technique as a, as a basis to build an atomic clock. What we do is we irradiate or shine energy on an atom, and when that energy that we're shining on that atom is tuned to just the right frequency, suddenly the atom will absorb that energy, change its state, and you can detect that that state's been changed. And so you lock onto that irradiating energy, that energy that you're focusing down on it, you tune it until it absorbs. As soon as it absorbs, you make it continue to absorb, and you lock onto that frequency. Now the beauty of that is, is that's a naturally occurring frequency, as opposed to the Isol uh, the vibration of a quartz crystal or the swinging of a pendulum clock, which are human-made resonators, this is a, the absorption point is, uh, of an atom is a, a naturally occurring Mother Nature kind of absorption. And so that is repeatable. If I build an atomic, an atomic clock here in Boulder, Colorado, someone builds it in California at sea level, someone builds it and puts it in space, they all operate at basically the same frequency because it's a naturally occurring absorption.